Hey, what's up? This is Dapper Dividends. I'm Russ. This is my daughter, Ivy, and we are Pepsi investors. <laughs> She's a brand new Pepsi investor. She just got her first share of Pepsi. She picked it out. And at, well, let's start there. Why did you want to invest in Pepsi for the first time? Because they're more than a soda company. They are more than a soda company. I love that. And then that's the purpose of this video is to show you just how expansive and diverse they are. So why is it good that they're more than a soda company? People want to be healthier and they have a lot more stuff to buy. Yeah, that they do. So I'm going to get into it. I'm going to show you the history of Pepsi, what they, how they started, how PepsiCo came about to be. And then I have five important brands that are under the Pepsi wing that you should be aware of. And then a few closing thoughts. So without further ado, let's get into the history of PepsiCo. This all started in 1965 when PepsiCola CEO Don Kendall and Frito-Lay CEO Herman Lay sketched out a deal on the back of a napkin to combine their companies. That same year, PepsiCo listed on the New York Stock Exchange for just 75 cents a share. This marked the first foray beyond the beverage market for Pepsi. A year later, in 1966, they launched Doritos throughout the United States, which was also one of my favorite snack foods as a kid in the 1980s. In 1972, Pepsi becomes the first U.S. consumer product to be produced, marketed, and sold in the Soviet Union. 1981 saw one of the most successful new product launches in Frito-Lay history with Tostitos. Harvey C. Russell, the first African-American American promoted to the rank of vice president retired in 1983. In 1989, PepsiCo won the right to enter India and agreed to work with Punjab tomato farmers in a public-private relationship that continues until today. PepsiCo acquired a controlling interest in Mexico's largest cookie company, Gamasa, in 1990. They acquired the Aquafina brand in 1992. PepsiCo partnered with Starbucks to develop ready-to-drink coffee beverages in 1994. 1997 was an important year when PepsiCo spun off KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut into Tricon restaurants which is now known and traded as Yum Brands, ticker symbol YUM. A year later in 1998, PepsiCo turned 100. One of my favorite food items, Quaker Oats, celebrated 125 years in 2002. They became a leading juice company in Russia with the acquisition of Lebedyansky in 2007. All electric delivery trucks started hitting the road in 2010. Diet Mountain Dew, Starbucks, and Brisk became billion dollar brands in 2012 bringing the total to 22 billion dollar brands. They celebrated 50 years as a combined food and beverage company in 2015. As a big believer in probiotics, it's really cool that in 2016, PepsiCo launched Tropicana Probiotics and acquired Kavita, expanding their health and wellness offerings. Another beverage that I'm quite fond of was launched in 2018, Bubbly Sparkling Water. And Ramon LaGuardia succeeded Indra Nooyi, becoming PepsiCo's sixth and current chairman and and CEO. That's a really condensed and very brief history of PepsiCo to give you a little flavor of the diversity of the company throughout their history. Now we're going to look at five important brands that you may or may not be aware of inside of PepsiCo. Number one, Frito-Lay was born out of the merger between the manufacturer of Fritos corn chips and the snack food delivery company started by Herman Lay in 1961. In 1965, they merged with PepsiCo for an acquisition price of $213 million. In fiscal year 2020, Frito-Lay North America accounted for 46% of operating profit and has a profit stream coming from 29 different brands such as Lay's, Doritos, Cheetos, Fritos, Sun Chips, Tostitos, Cracker Jack, Rolled Gold, Ruffles, and Smart Food, making them PepsiCo's largest profit producer by far. Number two, Quaker Oats trademarked their product in 1877 and became known as the Quaker Oats Company in 1901. A hundred years later, PepsiCo would acquire Quaker Oats for $13.8 billion on August 2nd, 2001. As of fiscal year 20, Quaker Oats North America accounted for 6% of PepsiCo's operating profit. Quaker contributed brands such as Pearl Milling Company, formerly known as Aunt Jemima, Captain Crunch and Life Cereals, Pastoroni, Quaker, Grits, Oatmeal, and also brought along the ubiquitous sports drink, Gatorade, and Quaker currently has 148 products. Number three, Tropicana was founded in 1947 as a Florida fruit gift box company 
company by Anthony Rossi, a Sicilian immigrant, and was acquired by PepsiCo from the Seagram Company on July 20th, 1998 for $3.3 billion. This non-organic growth meant that PepsiCo would be competing with Coca-Cola's Minute Maid Orange Juice brand. Number four, Naked Juice was founded in 1983 and acquired by PepsiCo from the private equity firm North Castle Partners for an undisclosed amount in January 2007. This acquisition expanded their presence further into the health and wellness space. Number five, Sabra Dipping Company was founded in 1986 and in 2005, Strauss Group purchased a 51% stake in the company, but in 2008, they signed an undisclosed 50-50 partnership agreement with PepsiCo to develop, manufacture, and market dips and spreads throughout the United States and Canada, and announced the launch of a new global dips and spreads product line under the Obella brand in 2012. That's just a small flavor of some of the brands that are under the PepsiCo name, and many you might not be aware of, and something that I truly love is the diversity. Many people think, as Ivy said, of PepsiCo as just a soda company, but look at this. As of fiscal year 2020, the balance of 55% food to 45% beverage, making it undeniable that they are more than a beverage company. They have more in food sales than beverages. And if that wasn't enough, their global presence of 58% US and 40 2% outside of the U.S. truly makes them an international company serving more than 200 countries and territories around the world. So it's really nice to see where PepsiCo has been, where they are, but as investors, we need to look through the windshield and see where they're going. And I love where PepsiCo is going, which is why I keep buying and they are now my top holding inside of the Bridge account. Where they are going, there's so many exciting things, everything from partnering with Beyond Meat to launching in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. They started snacks.com and pantryshop.com, which I might add on pantryshop.com is free shipping currently on orders over $20. Now this is a brilliant and smart idea that they're doing. It's going direct to consumer, selling directly to the customer, bypassing the retailer. In certain instances, this could be a fantastic thing. And I just love the foresight that they started with their direct to consumer vehicles. So there's so much more to this diverse company and this goes way beyond the scope of this video, which is just an introductory video into the breadth of diversity of PepsiCo and have a lot to offer to investors and consumers alike. If we've helped you out, we would ask that you help us out with a like and a subscribe and no additional cost to you. Follow me on Twitter at RustyRam78. Check me out on Instagram at DapDividends. And please, expertise comes from you in the community. I'm not perfect. I love the community comments. So leave a comment in the comment section below because you know where the comments go. We love to hear from you and I will see you in the next video.